Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at the Hoverbot Nano. It's 90 millimeters. It weighs 46.8 grams. Powered by 1103 motors, 6 amp ESCs, Pico BLX, CM275T, and Furious 2035 props. I have used these batteries primarily to fly it. As you can see the frame, it comes with this prop guard which is carbon fiber and we also have our base plate down here. We use a rubber band to secure the battery right across there. We've got a TPU printed mount specifically for the 275T. Uh, we can see that our antenna wires come neatly up through these holes, although it's a little bit fussy to get in there. It does. Uh, the standoffs or the nylon screws that come with it are quite long, so you clip those on off after you've got everything set up like you want. It does come with these extra pieces here, which I believe they're Duralin. I might be saying that wrong. It's uh, some sort of folded plastic, and the kit comes with a number of spares. It looks like two extra sets, but I don't think they're going to be needed because I've been crashing this thing all day and all night, and I'm on my first set still. The little hooks uh, do take some work to get in. You can see how they're just above the frame here on the end. You put this end in, and then you pop this side through. It takes a little bit of pressure here on the outer part in order to get this top part to clip through. But uh, once you get it in, it's nice and secure. Don't put your ESCs down before you get those in because you can see they do push those motor wires up a bit. So you may, uh, if you have everything secured down, you may be struggling against yourself. I added a bit of heat shrink here to the top of the antenna to help give it some durability. Uh, somehow I did break a prop and I don't know why, but it snapped off right at the hub. And I'm starting to wonder if, you know how sometimes colored props or one color is more durable than another color? Uh, I think these clear props might not be quite as durable as the Furious uh, colored props. So I've just replaced the one and I fly these others until they all break, I guess. There's not much difference in them. I do want to try some cut down um, HQ props. They're real big fat paddle props and I've got a host of them, but after I... Well, I tried to cut them down, but I hosed like three or four. I don't have a, a cut down tool or anything to make it very precise. Every time I put them on, they were um, giving me a vibrations and odd flight things. So I had to go back after I destroyed three or four of those props and decided I'd wait, maybe try to find a prop cutter or something on Thingiverse and I'd get one made uh, and sent to me. Um, I think they're relatively inexpensive, but this one's this one's a lot of fun. It's very unique. It's different than the other, others we've done, but it is an indoor brushless fire. It has most of the same parts we've been using on the other three, and uh, there's no build video for this one because I'll point you back to the Hoverbot site. They have a nice build video on their website, and we've kind of done this already three times. So there's really not much difference, uh, especially with this one, because it doesn't have a lot of the other pieces that would, you know, the, the the hoop style that would go around it. So you have to figure out how everything works together. This is a, a very straightforward build. It's just about as easy a build as you can get in this size. Um, everything is just kind of stack it like you would a normal quad, secure it like you would a normal quad. The only things that are different are these little plastic pieces out here that hold the prop guard up and away. 
This one was also featured on Boba Fett FPV's uh, live stream. He did some laps. He used the, uh, oh, it's that lap timer that you can set up and it, it talks to you. It's real small, like 60 bucks. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. But he flew a bunch of uh, laps and uh, that looked like a lot of fun. And I had mine built and I'd been enjoying mine as well. And I've been throwing a lot of batteries through this. And it's just good fun. I don't have a whole lot to say about this vehicle over any of the other vehicles. We'll get to that when we do a comparison. But this one is uh, currently, it's one of my favorites um, of all of them. Uh, I actually wanted to take it outside today, but I was doing some flying with the Rodeo 110. And then I ran out of time as I had to go on to other things before I got a chance to fly this outside. So maybe tomorrow. And if I get some flight footage tomorrow before I need to post this video, then uh, you'll see it. But uh if not, you know, it's a great indoor flyer. I found myself flying much more hard, more aggressive. Um, I felt like I would take more risks with this one uh, just because I think it, it's going to hold together possibly a little bit better than the others. You know, there's if I break anything, it's probably going to be one of these, and I've got a host of spares. Now, I do think I did one thing wrong. It came with these little tiny rubber bands, and I think you're supposed to put these rubber bands over the uh, ends here before you have the prop guard on. See that little notch? Then you get it in the notch, uh, you put the prop guard on, and then you string it up and over. helps to keep this down. But there is a little notch cut in there, and I haven't found this thing to be coming off. You can kind of wiggle it around in your fingers a little bit, but it hasn't been a problem for me. The pressure fitting has been fine. I haven't had to re um, replace anything or, or put it back on by any stretch there. That one just snapped back in. Um, so hard telling how long I've been flying with that one, just a little bit out. So that's kind of one thing I did wrong. That's the only build tip I've really got for you. We're going to jump into the long flight. I uh, hope you enjoy it. And uh, I think that we need to do a better job of sharing these independent designers. So if you would, please share the video, uh, share the link to the, uh, the Hoverbot Nano website. I think Hoverbot, as well as the others, they all d deserve a lot more attention than they're getting. They make a great and unique product. They make a product that um, others should see. I saw Steel did another uh, Tiny Hoop video the other day. I think we need to get more of these in really talented pilots' hands to really see how they can be explored in flight. Because in my hands, it's kind of, eh, you know, I'm getting there, but I'm nowhere near, you know, their level. But it's a lot of fun. It'll be fun for you, too. But I'd love to see somebody like Steele or Chad Novak or, or oh my, Tommy, oh, my God, or um, even watching Boba Fett FPV. He's a racer, uh, and I think he was going to get into acrobatics in his video, but he ended up not because I think he ran out of batteries uh, to run through it, that particular live stream. And, of course, with a live stream, there's no time to charge. Uh, but I think these deserve a lot more attention. So share the videos. I'm going to create a playlist of indoor brushless flyers, and I'll put that right up here. Uh, share the playlist with others, you know, Facebook it, whatever you want to do. And it's not necessarily about people getting views of this, uh, my channel, but I think these designers deserve a lot more attention. And I think this niche of micro indoor is going to explode. I think with the uh, new race categories coming up to include these, I think we're going to see a lot more of these, and we might see a lot more of this specific one in that category as well. Okay, if you have any questions or comments, leave those in the section down below. Remember, share. All right, enjoy the flight. <laughs> 